Hello, hello, and welcome to another Not With Me video. If you are new here, my name is Marsha Knotts. I make friendship bracelet videos, and my Not With Me videos are just videos of me knotting a bracelet really sped up. Uh, it's a time lapse. This actually took 10 hours to do. <laughs> and I just talk to you guys about whatever I feel like. I usually use these as a sort of update into my life kind of videos. Uh, so today we are making a beautiful wall hanging bracelet. Uh, um, it's not even a bracelet, is it? I can't even call it a bracelet. Uh, it's a wall hanging. <laughs> it's an alpha wall hanging and I'm making probably my last uh, autumnal sort of themed, uh, I keep saying bracelet, it's not a bracelet, uh, of the year. Uh, we're gonna see more of the design as we go along. And I mean, I guess you already saw the thumbnail anyway. It's a little mushroom house. I love it. I saw this, um, I was trying to get out of a bracelet slump, if I'm being honest. I was in a bit of a bracelet slump and I first tried tried getting out of it by making some uh, normal bracelets, but that sort of didn't work out and I realized that I'm still kind of in the mood to make alphas. Uh, so I made a bunch of like smaller alphas and then I thought, okay, well, I ordered these um, wooden dowels. Um, they're 15 centimeters long. Uh, I don't know how thick they are. But I got them on Amazon. Uh, I got a hundred <laughs> of them, which I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to use a hundred. I'm probably going to give away a bunch uh, to my patrons and just like some people that I exchange uh, bracelet gifts with. Um, and um, yeah, I thought I was going to do a wall hanging and I found this bracelet pattern and I just, I couldn't take my eyes off it. It's so beautiful. It reminds me of a sort of like fairy house. Uh, you'll see more of it as we go along with the pattern. But yeah, as I said, this, this, yeah, this took me 10 hours to do. I think it was like three or four days, uh, but when I say 10 hours, I mean literally just 10 hours of raw knotting. Uh, it actually took more because obviously I had to cut the strings, I had to put them on the dowel, that probably took an hour in itself maybe more. Um, I then also don't show sometimes, like in between uh, cuts, of in, in between sessions uh, of filming, I would um, fix up the back, like I would cut some strings off uh, from the back, I would uh, insert new strings, so there's a lot of stuff that I didn't actually film, I'm only filming the raw knotting process, but this in itself took 10 hours, <laughs> which is probably the most I've spent on any bracelet or any sort of a thing that I've ever done. This isn't a bracelet, <laughs> but uh, I think it's very much worth it. I really enjoyed the process and I really enjoy the outcome. Uh, you can see me here going in with a ruler. I, um, I use a ruler to make sure that my rows are still going horizontally the way that I want them because um, obviously like if you're making a bracelet and you're in an alpha uh, and you're switching the colors a lot they tend to sort of mess up your row a little bit. You can see like even here um, the row sort of goes down instead of going straight uh, horizontally and um, by using a ruler I can sort of judge how like which part of my bracelet which string which color is going out of the the row uh, and then I could also use that uh, what, ruler? I forgot the word for that. <laughs> I could use the ruler as well to sort of push the knots up and down a little bit to make sure that they are going straight horizontally. You can also see here the edges of the bracelet. I'm gonna keep calling this a bracelet just because I'm used to that, but the, the edges of it are sort of going in um, because the... Um, basically there's a lot of reasons that this happens. I I say this a lot and I genuinely don't think you guys believe me. I mean, some of you do, obviously, but like a lot of you guys, based on the comments and the messages that I get, don't believe me when I say that I'm not amazing at making alphas. I struggle with my alphas a lot. I know that there are people out there who make alphas much better than I do and I genuinely struggle with them. I know I'm pretty good, but that doesn't mean I'm excellent. I, that doesn't mean I'm perfect. There are still a lot of things that I want to get better at and one of those things is keeping the edges of my bracelets straight. And um, I I struggle with it a lot um, and uh, with making this bracelet I tried a few different techniques that honestly I can't believe I never thought of before because it seems so obvious now that I think about it and when I posted about it on my Instagram story I got a lot of messages saying that uh, from people saying that oh yeah I, I do this all the time it works perfectly I can't believe I never thought of that but uh, one of the reasons that the bracelet uh, sort of goes in uh, which I, I do fix in the end. In the end, it is very straight on the edges. But one of the reasons it does go in is because, for example, at the top uh, with the little mushroom uh, hat or whatever you call it, you can see that um, the blue, 
for the background uh, is on the left and on the right of the mushroom hat and then the dark sort of deep red that is the outline of the mushroom is also on the left and on the right of that. Uh, so what ends up happening is when you're making the sort of middle with the light red and the uh, white, the deep red and the blue strings have to go all the way from left to right, from right to left, and they sort of have to stretch uh, out across the entire portion of the middle. Um, and that ends up making the... Um, like tightening the bracelet together and pulling the edges in because the blue string from the left pulls on the blue string on, from the right and so on. Um, and same with the deep red, it sort of pulls on the, it itself and contracts the bracelet. And so what I ended up doing here after I did a bunch of that, um, which I think <laughs> I still do this here, I don't think I realized that I could uh, change it up. Oh no, I did. You can see. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to it. I'm going a bit ahead of myself. Um, I ended up going back uh, to the back of the bracelet and cutting up all of those pieces that were pulling on themselves. Uh, obviously, I did this a little bit later. I didn't do this in the moment because if I had done that in the moment, um, I might have messed up the bracelet a bit. So I did a bunch of rows after that and then I cut them off and that ended up loosening the bracelet uh, quite a bit. Um, and then here, you can see that we've got sort of uh, the brown on the left and the right, the two greens and the two whites as well on the left and on the right. I ended up using two separate strings and also for the blue, for the background, I ended up using two separate strings. So you can see on the left, there's like a blue, green uh, and the brown string. And then on the right, you can also see the blue, green and the brown string. Those are two separate strings that I'm using. So those strings don't have to overlap the entire design. I think that especially helps when you've got like a really big bracelet, uh, such as here. Um, so you don't have to, it saves you the string and it also keeps your bracelet neater and easier to work with because uh, with that tightening of the string at the back as well, it sort of ends up pushing the design out a bit and makes it a little bit bumpy. And so by um, eliminating that, it's easier to work with and um, yeah, it just it makes it for a nice and neater bracelet. It's not as bumpy and the edges are straighter. So yeah, I can't believe I never thought of doing that before. Apparently it's something that people have been doing for a long time. Nobody's ever told me that this is something that can be done. <laughs> I sort of came to that conclusion on my own, decided to try it, but apparently it's a thing that people do. So yeah, I'm very happy. I must say though, this still was incredibly difficult to knot. The top of it was fine because there's only like four colors that you have to do, but here, because there's two separate greens, which you can barely tell apart to be honest, but yeah, whatever. It is what it is. There's two greens. There's like two browns, the uh, four browns for the two for the door and two for the actual mushroom itself. Then you've got the reds, the whites, the gray came in for the door as well. Uh, there was just so many colors, <laughs> so many colors. I it took me forever. I think one row at the top where the mushroom uh, hat is I think one row was about 10 minutes or so but when I got to this part one row was anywhere from like 15 to 20 minutes each so it definitely took me a while to do but I had so much fun I've done a wall hanging before um over the summer you might have seen uh, if you've watched my videos for a while uh, the little sloth bracelet that I did but that um didn't turn out as well. That did not turn out as well because I, for the longest time, was making really, really tight knots. And because I did that uh, with the sloth bracelet, it ended up contracting as well. It was super, super hard. Um, like you could sort of smack it against the table and you would hear like a thump. Um, it was super hard. It was not stretchable at all. And it just kind of was a bit of a mess and it ended up being a little bit bumpy because of that as well. But I've been recently sort of experimenting with my alphas more and I've started to loosen up my knots and that has allowed me to sort of manipulate my bracelet more. So by, I was not able to use my ruler before, like in that, um, a sloth bracelet that I did, I tried using my ruler and because my knots were so tight, they were sort of frozen in place and even by using a ruler with great force, I wasn't able to move the knots at all. But now that I've loosened up my knot tension, I'm able to use a ruler to sort of manipulate the rows to make sure they are all going straight and um, sort of pull some of it down, push some of it up. Um, yeah, I'm still making mistakes there, <laughs> as you can see. Um, and then also stretch them out from like side to side. I, as I said, like I cut some of those uh, strings at the top where I didn't do the sort of double string thing. And then when I did uh, do the double string for the left and the right, I can sort of pull and push my bracelet uh, out and in <laughs> when I need to. And so I'm, I'm much happier with the way that I make my alphas now. Um, so this was definitely a very, very fun experience. It took me forever, but <laughs> I had a great time. Uh, we're nearing the end now. 
and um, yeah, I, I was really excited. I love this thing so much. It's, it's probably, um, I'm thinking of making like a um, top 10 or top 20 bracelets of 2020 at the end of the year to sort of look through and reminisce on all the bracelets that I made this year. And this thing, this thing is going to the top. This was super fun. I had a great time doing it. And I, um, I definitely recommend trying, maybe not like such a big bracelet if you're not comfortable, but I definitely recommend trying making a wall hanging of some kind um, at some point, because especially like when you start after a wooden dowel, it's kind of easier to keep your knots, uh, your rows straight because the first row is always going to be straight. But that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. There's going to be a super fast time lapse at the end of the video when I stop talking and that's very satisfying to watch. But here you go, this is a look of what the actual wall hanging turned out to be. I absolutely love it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well. If you want more content from me, you should follow me on Twitch. I try to go live about twice a week and then I re-upload my streams on my Masha Streams channel if you've missed them. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Before I go, I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and especially my top supporters whose names are going to appear on screen. Thank you guys very much for your support. If you also want to become a patron, there is a link in the description where you can sign up and get exclusive perks for your donations. I also just recently created a public Discord server, so if you want to come chat with me or other bracelet friends, there's a link in the description to join the Discord server. But all that being said, thank you guys very much for watching. I'm going to leave you with the super fast time lapse and I will see you in the next video. Bye.